Hey guys, how's it going? Alex Allgood from Broad Productions, and today I'm going to show you how to stabilize your footage in Adobe After Effects. Before we get started, let's get some basics out of the way. This can be done on PC or Mac. I have a lot of questions about that, and as long as you have After Effects, obviously, you can do this. Second goes to which versions. This will be a two-part tutorial, and... Um, the first part will be over CS5.5's Warp Stabilizer, which is only in CS5.5, and the second will be for all other versions and my personal favorite way to stabilize footage by using the tracking method. So first we'll do Warp Stabilizer, and uh, if not, there should be an annotation in the video telling you uh, what time in the video will start the second half. So click that if you don't have CS5.5, but for those that do, here we go. So, I'm in my composition, and first I will show you my my blank footage, what it looks like. It is my good friend Austin here, walking all badass-like with his Mustang, thinking he is all cool, but he's not. God, he's not cool at all. <laughs> I'm so jealous. <laughs> now, here I have my warped footage. Um, due to me having to record this multiple times and my computer pooping on itself for some reason, I just went ahead and stabilized the footage, but I'll still show you the process on how to do it. Um, you're going to right click on your footage and just click stabilize motion. And then from there, in your effects control, it's going to put in the warp stabilizer and it's going to have a blue bar across your screen saying analyzing background this can be a very hardcore process for your processor and uh and uh, memory in your computer so it basically slows it down your computer so don't do anything else just let it analyze so it happens faster and let's see what it looks like just stock without changing any of the settings inside of the stabilizer you fucker and here it is stabilized uh, the cool thing about Warp Stabilizer is that it keeps your, your original movements on the camera, but just makes them smoother and takes out any little mini jars or any sudden movements in there and just makes it one fluid motion, which is really handy, and it's harder to do with the second method. Um, so go Adobe. Now, let's get more in-depth with the Warp Stabilizer. Now, your best friend with this plugin is this smoothness option. It really does what it says. The higher the percentage, the more of a smoothness effect you're going to get on your video the less the less it actually stabilizes um, also this warp stabilizer has an auto crop in feature so it takes out any of your black edges automatically um, and from that I realized the, um, the the lower the percentage the more it zooms in automatically which makes sense the higher the percentage the more stabilized footage you're going to get, but the more you're going to have to zoom into your footage being that it is stabilized and you can't have just, you know, black bars coming in where your video. So whenever you move this, it'll bring back up the stabilizing menu and just let it stabilize and do its thing. It shouldn't take as long as the uh, analyzing background function. There's also different types of methods that Warp Stabilizer uses to stabilize your footage. There's a new thing called Subspace Warp, which in some instances can make your video look like it's bending and, and literally warping. And most of the time, it's your best option, but sometimes it's not. And sadly, my video is not, so I can't give you a good example of what it looks like. But if you notice a little warping in your video, I recommend going to Position, Scale, and Rotation. It just uses the Transform properties and you know keeps your video looking the exact same but again that is dependent on your footage and most of the time subspace warp does a really good job now um, back to framing where when you stabilize something it of course has to be cropped because it can't just make up new frames um, it's going to be pushed in and pushed out while your footage is being stabilized so you can go to framing and you can go to stabilize only and this will show you what I'm talking about is uh, see like these black edges and stuff come in because the video is literally moving to keep this in the same area I usually put in auto scale and it just you know does a great job and then I use the smoothness slider to really determine how zoomed in I really want to get because the more you zoom in the more loss of quality you have and <laughs> that's just no good so usually you never really have to change that it usually does just great I could talk about the warp stabilizer for hours but I really just don't want to bore you um, it's pretty simple um, just a couple things you gotta play with um, make sure make sure you really shoot for it uh, it's hard to get footage 
that you didn't want to be stabilized and then at the last second in post you're just like oh i'm gonna stabilize this shot and sometimes it just doesn't work out so now we're gonna go to the part two of the tutorial um for all you people who skipped out welcome um i pre-rendered this um again because my computer is trying to take a dump on itself and uh you know i just don't want to clean up the mess so so here's what we're going to do today, which in my opinion is way cooler than what the warp stabilizer does. Just a little bit more advanced. Here we go. And as you can see, we stabilized it, but on his eyes. Neato! I pretty much already did this, and I'm just going to take you through all the steps I did to do it. So first things first, you're going to want to track your footage. If you do not know how to track your footage, then I recommend going to videocopilot.net and they have some great tutorials on tracking all sorts of types of footage and the best ways to do it. So go check those out because I really just don't want to have a tutorial on how to track um, but more just this creative way to use it. I'm going to have to hit track motion and then from here don't click stabilize motion because it'll bring up the warp stabilizer. You're going to go to track type stabilize that way. Now on this track, I did only the position and rotation tracking. Um, if you want his eyes, or your subject's eyes, or really whatever you're tracking. Um, actually, you know what? I totally forgot about this. Check this out. This is a commercial I saw on Panasonic, and they implemented this not on someone's face, but rather on a laptop. It's really quick, and uh, hopefully you'll see it in the commercial. That was it. Just that little beginning. It's still a little subtle. But they still use that technique, and it's actually what influenced me to make this tutorial. We are just going to click the position on our tracker, find a good point. In this instance, it is an eye. Usually, if you're tracking a face, it most of the time is an eye or an ear. Uh, maybe maybe the nose, but you never you really have luck with noses, you know? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we don't have to make a null object or anything. We're just going to... Put our tracker right there, click play, play throughout what we want tracked, and click apply. It'll come up with something that says um, apply to x and y axes, and you want to say yes. I do want to do that. Then it'll bring you right back to your normal composition right here, to where we are right now. When you track something, it brings black bars. <laughs> no good. Um, because the, mo the video is actually moving. So we're going to add an effect called motion dial. Actually, I already have it dragged on there. What am I doing? So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And what I've done here, I'll reset it, is I clicked mirror edges, mirror, mirror edges, I can't talk, um, and click your output width and height just a little bit further out. Don't go crazy and t go to like a 1,000 or else your computer won't be able to handle itself. So usually just between 150 to 200 does the job depending on how stabilized your footage needs to be. Um, now, this is going to be used as a safety, and you don't want to keep the video just like this. Now, we're going to go to Transform, and uh, let's get our scale. Find find a point in your video where you've got a pretty good black line or black solid, solid hanging in there. Um, so that way we can scale up accordingly and get that out of there. And the motion tile, if we have any sudden ones, should save us if there's any little ones where we don't want to zoom in that much. Um, and then we can always adjust our position accordingly to wherever you want. And uh, you should be good to go. I really like it because it lets you focus on his eyes and it's something that's humanly impossible to do in real life. So just a cool, fun effect um, you can put on your videos to give it kind of some more production value, I'd say. Also, the warp stabilizer, great for any little shaky shots that I want to be smooth, aka some homemade dolly shots where your dolly isn't perfectly smooth. I hope this tutorial helped. Um, there might be a lot of questions asked, I feel like. So if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, feel free to comment below, leave me a video response, or message my YouTube channel. So hope you guys have a wonderful day, keep shooting, and have fun editing.